गुड मॉर्निंग लेट्स स्टार्ट द डेली डिस्कशन द फर्स्ट टॉपिक इज राइजिंग राइजिंग ह्यूमन एनिमल कंफ्लिक्ट ओ एन ये द बॉयल आउट ऑफ द वाइल्ड एलिफेंट चेस पार्टिसिपेट ऑफ मैन एंड ट्रैंपल्ड इन टू डेथ दिस इज रेगुलर फेनोमेना आई विल नोटिस सर इन द सो मेनी प्लेसेस इन ओडिसा देयर आर मेनी इंसिडेंट्स ऑफ द एलिफेंट किलिंग ह्यूमन बीइंग द ट्रेजेडी ब्रिंग्स टू अटेंशन एस्कलेशन ह्यूमन एनिमल कंफ्लिक्ट in the state increase in incidence of wild animals mainly elephant tiger bison and the wild boar attack in human being have been reported from across the state so in the state okay so uh, government data for 2023 recorded 8876 wild animal attack of which 400 uh, 1193 by the wild elephants 1524 uh, by wild boars 193 by tigers 244 by leopards and 30 by the bisons So of the 94 reported deaths, 27 were due to elephant attack. That means elephant had trespassed into human location, and that is leading to death. Beyond posing risk to human, these attack also devastated Kerala's agricultural sector because uh, elephant destroyed the agriculture to its considerable extent during the uh, ripening season of the crop. From 2017 to 2023, there were 20,957 incidents of crop loss due to wild animal raids. Which also killed uh, 1,559 domestic animals, mainly cattle. Oyant was the affected region. Oyant, uh, which boasts a forest cover of 36.48 percent, has lost 51 life of elephant attack and 72 tiger attack over the last decades. The geographical location plays a role in this because this area having a 36 to 40, 36 to 37 percent of forest cover, it is a place for uh, wild elephants and tigers, and they attack. the civilians and the animals region behind right the human animal conflict in kerala in 1981 study by the darad and wildlife institute of india and the peria tiger conservation foundation in kerala found two major drivers of human animal conflict in the state so first is the decline in the quality of forest habitat largely due to cultivation of alien plants mainly acacia and eucalyptus uh, like plants uh the forest track for commercial purposes so uh, 3000 hectares of forest land in kerala being used for cultivation of these species species animals are derived from deprived of their natural habitat and food sources because when the man cultivate or plants different trees which are not consumed okay by the elephants that led to the loss of life uh, because they came to the uh, uh, habitation areas okay moreover these water gathering species also drain the forest natural water resources elephant are among the most affected species due to this invasive species such as the lantana the mycania and the sena planted by the forest department over decades have also hindered growth of natural vegetation in the forest okay so uh, this is another big reason for the migration of the uh, uh, animals moving out of their own zone to the habitation areas the study also found that changing agro practices are also responsible for the drawing animals which do not find enough fodder in their habitat out of the forest recent years owing to poor return and high wage cost more and more farmland being left on untended this makes them ideal target for wild uh, life looking uh, to sneak to barren and pineapple among the most cultivated crop in the region moreover the increase in wild uh, fire attack has further pushed people to separate settlement away from the farm parts this further entice animal to raid straight uh, neighboring the forest area the crisis in kerala farm sector also driven many towards the animal husbandry you know even particularly the dairy sector has emerged as a lifeline for villages but domesticated animals are also prime target of the tigers and other carnivores especially old animals less capable of hunting in the wild Apart from declining quality of forest and human activities, following human activity also contributed to increasing animal-human conflict in Kerala. First is waste disposal near the uh, uh, coastal areas. Okay, because in the in the forest area, the waste are uh, disposed that led to the spread of the waste, attract the wild animal to come out of their uh, habitation to the uh, habitat uh, near to the 
area of the habitation and that led to the man animal conflict in the long run that means of animal habitat due to wanton construction and increased human presence in and around the animal habitat at the other regions for spread of this particular incident called human animal conflict okay so okay. to some extent natural events are there and to some extent human activity and the more uh, each of the uh, human activity than So this this is a major reason for this particular issue. Okay. How is Kerala addressing this issue? The state has several schemes meant to prevent animals from entering to human settlement. They include schemes for the construction of elephant proof trenches, elephant proof stone walls, and solar power lifting tents. In 2023, the state conducted a maintenance of 158.4 km elephant proof trenches and constructed 42.6 km solar fencing and 237 meter of compound work. To keep animal in forest, Kerala has also undertaken eco restoration program by which the ecology inside the forest is properly maintained. For which, so the animal will uh, be staying inside their own habitat. Uh, to keep animal in forest, Kerala has undertaken eco restoration program. The state is also running a scheme to acquire land from farmers to be uh, converting them to forest land. So the government is purchasing lands from the farmers to use that land. For afforestation. So, this can to some extent resolve this. However, these measures are far away from the addressing the crisis. Elephant culture are linear, narrow, natural habitat linkage that allow elephant to move between secure habitats without being disturbed by humans. Elephant culture are also critical for yeah, either wildlife in full areas and major national animal, the Royal Bengal tiger, the Panthera tigers. Elephant culture in India, number of elephant cultures in India have been changing over the years. 88 cultures were identified jointly by the Ministry of Land, Forest and Climate Change and Wildlife Trust of India and published in 2005. The Wildlife Trust of India is an Indian NGO committed to nature conservation in 2015. A second order of recognition took, took place and when it published three years later, the number of cultures has gone up to 101 from 80 to 101. The number of tiger cultures has increased from 88. To okay, so this has increased. So the number of corridors increased because of fragments of existing corridor. As per the elephant corridor of India 2020 report, there is a surge of 62 new corridors, making a 40 percent increase in 2010 and totaling to 150 corridors across the nation. So, exploring the highest number of elephant cultures will be 26. Culter is a uh, path that the elephant took to move from one place to another. And that is the most uh, affected areas.
Okay. Then the uh, next topic is impersonalization. A third of these eight ex Indian Navy men jailed on disciplinary charges and unknown death sentence have been awarded by the court. Uttar Pradesh eight veterans of the Indian Navy who are sentenced to death on disciplinary charges. Seven of the eight uh, former Indian Navy personnel have now returned to India. So uh, the high level visit, the two countries have uh, had a friendly relation for decades. Uh, since Prime Minister Manmohan Singh's visit to Qatar in 2008, the past by the Indian Prime Minister relationship has gradually improved. The Emir of Qatar, Sheikh uh, Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, entered India in 2015, and PM Modi went to Qatar in 2016. The late Sushma Swaraj became the first Indian Prime Minister to visit Qatar in 2018. Qatar is a Muslim country. In 2020, India was among the top four export destinations in Qatar. It is almost the top three source of Qatar import. Okay, that means India, Qatar, administration is on an upswing since the visit of Amman Singh. So, uh, okay. So, India's total import from Qatar in 2023 to 2024 was valued at 16.81 billion. Of LNG import alone were 8.32 billion or 49 percent. Qatar is India's largest source of liquefied natural gas (LNG). India export to Qatar were valued at just 1.97 billion in 2023-2023. The major export include cereals, copper articles, iron and steel articles, vegetables, fruits, spices, and processed food products, which are exported to Qatar from India. LNG supply. In January 2024, India and Qatar agreed to prolong their LNG supply agreement extending until 2028. India's Petronet has secured in uh, Monumental deal to continue purchase 7.5 million tons of LNG annually from Qatar starting from 2029. This agreement held at the world's largest extension. So this agreement held at the world's largest extension for liquefied natural gas built on original project contract initiated in 1999 with the deliveries commencing from 2004. That means India has been purchasing the Qatari uh, natural gas from 2004 for which the agreement was signed in 1999. Defense Cooperation Defense Cooperation has been officially described as the pillar of Indian Qatar ties. The Indian Qatar Defense Cooperation Agreement. Okay, India Qatar. Defense Cooperation Agreement. Okay, uh, agreement signed during the PM uh, since visit in Abu was a significant turning point. The agreement was extended for another five years in 2018. Export at that time described the agreement as just sort of stationary troops. India Naval and Coastal Guard ship regularly visit Qatar. The uh, QNF delegations participated in two marine exercises in India with the Qatari. Naval expedition. They participated in uh, that exercise in India. Two additions of the joint naval exercise called the Jair al Bar have been held between the two countries. Indian migrant in Qatar. Qatar has around 8 lakh Indian migrants who sent uh, remittances back home. In 21 22, it sent the highest, uh, eight highest amount of remittance among all the countries to India. Remittance is the amount that the Indian working abroad sent to India. Okay, that is called the remittance. Challenges in India Qatar by legislation, BJP spokesperson derogatory reference to the profit on the TV show. In June 2022, BJP spokesperson Nupur Sarma made derogatory reference to the profit on the TV show. Qatar was first to draw it and demand a public apology from India soon after the controversy erupted. The boil over the Israeli bombardment of Gaza, the news of the death penalty for the Indian has been come at a time when Middle East is on the boil over the Israeli bombardment of Gaza Strip. And the uh, Qatari uh, Qatar is closely uh, in relation to the uh, Hamas. So, uh, Qatar, which is deeply sympathetic to the Palestinians, has negated the release of two American hostages from Hamas to Syria in Gaza, and the country's diplomat are said to be working as a regional mediator in the region crisis. The uh, background of the recent issue, arrest of eight Navy personnel, 
in August 30, 2022, eight former Indian Navy personnel along with two others were arrested on undeclared charges. They are put in solitary confinement. These personnel were working at the Al Dara Global Technology and Consultancy Services. Okay, a defense service provider company in the car. As per different sources, the Indian had been working in their private capacity with the company to oversee the induction of Italian small street submarine uh, U2 I2 under the U2 I2 program. Okay, the company's old website, which no longer exists, said it provided training, logistics, and maintenance service to the Qatari Emir Nabar forces. And these uh, Indians are working with that particular company. The officer adjourned on charges that have not been made public. However, as per the media report, eight Indians have been charged uh, with spying for Israel. So that means they spy for Israel from the while they working in the Qatar, uh, Qatari uh, system, defense system. They acted as uh, they acted as spy for the Israeli. And under this basis. So they have been arrested and uh, signs of that in imprisonment, uh, rigorous imprisonment, okay, and they have been sentenced to death, death penalty. So the in, in, in uh, March 2020, last uh, multiple bail pleas filed for the matter was rejected. The trial began later that month and in October 2026, 2023. The death sentence was handed to all the eight men. In November 2020, the Ministry of National Affairs announced it has filed an appeal and its legal team has retained of the charges. In December 23, the Court of Appeal of Qatar commuted the death sentence of eight members of Indian Navy personnel. This will reduce. Uh, this development follows intense diplomatic efforts nearly four months after the Qatari court's death sentence was commuted to various legal terms. The release of the Navy veteran in a test test testament to the robust diplomatic channel. And the goodwill share between the India and Qatar. And the relationship is good, so they are persuaded to leave the Indian naval personnel. Okay, so it not only reinforces the safety and security of Indian nationals abroad, but also strengthens bilateral ties. Millions of Indians reside and are employed across the Gulf region, serving as a significant source of remittance for India and playing a key role in the prosperity of the Gulf economies. This incident demonstrated India's growing influence on the global scale and its ability to protect its citizen interests internationally. Okay, then in the next topic, it was the ARC system model. The Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology is developing a fast for India ARC system model to improve climate forecast and predict climate impact. About the ARC system model, it is an open source software that is designed to integrate the Interaction of atmosphere, ocean, land, ice, and biosphere to establish the state of regional and global climate under wide variety of conditions. Since it is based on numerical weather prediction and data assimilation, it can be used for accurate climate change predictions. The Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology, along with the Center for Climate Change Research, is developing this first for India Earth System model. About the Earth System model, to improve its forecast, facilitate long-term climate study, and predict climate impact in the coming years. The IITM uh, ESM incorporates Earth System component, Earth System model of the climate forecast system from National Center for Environment Prediction USA and transform the, uh, this uh, signal prediction model to a long-term climate model. And they, then they will be able to arrive at their own model. An amount of 192.28 crore has been sanctioned under okay this uh, under this uh, monsoon uh, convection, clouds and climate change uh, sub scheme to develop the climate forecasting system. The work is on the model is the work on the model is already underway and expected to be completed by 2024 when it will be made operational. Fine. Monsoon uh, convection, clouds and climate. Okay, it was envisioned to improve the observational database and climate model for enhanced predictive, predictivity, understanding of monsoonal precipitation charges and their impact in the warming environment. The overarching goal of the MC4 is MC4 stands for monsoon convection, cloud, climate change. Okay. To describe better and quantify interaction among monsoonal dynamics, clouds, erosions, precipitation, 
and water cycle in a changing climate. So, Minister of Earth Science is the nodal ministry for this. So, Minister of Earth Science will act as the nodal ministry for this. Then, the first telescope. Okay. Recently, astronomers from the Nijang uh, University in China and elsewhere have detected a radio pulsar in a supernova uh, remnant known as the CTB87 by using the 500 meter aperture uh, spherical radio telescope. Okay, spherical aperture radio telescope. The 500 meter aperture spherical radio telescope uh, located in the Karast depression in the Guzhou in China. It is the world's uh, uh, largest single dish radio telescope with a receiving area equivalent to 30 football pitch. They expected that the past will maintain its water class status for the next 20 to 30 years because no other country is able to build such a mega radio telescope which China has built. Uh, so the, its objective is to detect uh, uh, hydrogen to the edge of the universe and reconstruct the image of the early universe, discover pulsar, establish a pulsar timing array and participate in the uh, full navigation and gravitational wave detection in the future. Join the international uh, very long uh, baseline interplanetary network to obtain uh, hyperfine structure of celestial bodies. Perform high resolution radio spectral survey, detect weak space signals, participate in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. What are the pulsars? The pulsar is a highly magnetized rotating neutron star that emits beam of the electromagnetic radiation. These beams are observed as regular pulsars of radio waves. Hence, uh, name pulsar. Pulsars are uh, incredibly dense and have a mass greater than that of the sun, packed into a sphere with a diameter of about 20 km. Okay, then what is the supernova remnants? These are the aftermath of the massive star explosions. Okay, when a star reaches the end of its life, it undergoes the supernova explosion, releasing an enormous amount of energy and scattering its outer layers into space. This remnant of the explosion contains various elements and provides reliable insight into the processes occurring uh, during the star's evolution. So, how it has occurred, how the star has evolved, it has been uh, it, 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 it normally manifested in the supernova explosion. Then, Pradhan Mantri Kishan Sampad Jodhana. Okay. So, recently, the Indian Minister of State for Food Processing Industry informed the Rajya Sabha about the Pradhan Mantri uh, uh, Kishan Sampad Jodhana. The central sector scheme, Sampada. Scheme for Agro Marine Processing and Development Agro Processing Cluster was approved by the Cabinet in May 2017. The scheme has now been renamed as the Pradhan Mantri Kishan Sampada Jojana. It is a comprehensive package of component schemes which is aimed at creation of modern infrastructure with efficient supply chain management uh, from farm gate to retail outlet. Uh, it provides a boost to the growth of food processing sector in the country. Helps in providing better prices to farmers, create employment opportunities, especially in the rural areas, reduces wastage uh, of agricultural produce, increases the production processing level, and enhances the export of the processed foods. The objective of the Pradhanamati Kishan Pada Jodhana is to supplement agriculture, modernize processing, and decrease agricultural waste. Okay, so this is what is the prime objective of this program launched by the government. Pradhanamati Kishan Pada Jodhana. So, under this mega food park, integrated cold chain and value addition infrastructure, infrastructure for agro processing clusters, creation of uh, backward and forward linkages, creation uh, of backward linkages, creation of extend, expand, creation, expansion of food processing and food division capacities, uh, food safety and quality assurance infrastructure, human resources and institutions. Okay, and here the Ministry of Food Processing Industry, the nodal ministry for this program of the government. Then the higher altitude pseudo satellite vehicle apps. So recently the National Aeronautical Aerospace Laboratory in Bangalore has successfully completed the first test of a solar power high altitude pseudo uh, uh, satellite vehicle. It is a new age unmanned aerial vehicle that can significantly increase India's in surveillance and monitoring capability in the border area. It is, it is a still developing technology and the successful test flight last week pushed India among a very small group of countries 
currently experimenting with this technology. It can fly at altitude of 18.8 km on the ground, almost double the height achieved by commercial aeroplane. It has the ability to generate solar power. It can remain in air for months in the year, after huge advantages of a satellite. It does not require a rocket to get into space. The cost of operating hubs is several times lower than that of the satellite. It is usually placed at about 200 km from the Earth. So it can be very useful in diaster situations. It can even be used to provide mobile communication network in remote areas. Even it can be used in continuous surveillance of other areas to check the changes of the moment of any personal uh, from the enemy side. The Supreme Court of India recently agreed to examine whether the words salish and secular can be removed from the preamble of the Indian Constitution. The preamble Indian Constitution serves as a brief introductory statement of the Constitution that set out the guiding principle, uh, purpose, principle, philosophy of the Indian Constitution. The preamble is based on the objective resolution drafted at Mumbai Jawaharlal Nehru and advocated by the Constitution, adopted by the Constitution Assembly of India on January 27, 19. January 22, 1947. Source of authority. So it, it deals with the source and authority of the constitution. It indicated by the preamble that the source of authority of the constitution lies with the people of India. Nature of Indian state, it declares India to be a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic. So object of the constitution, the objective stated by the preamble are to secure justice, liberty, equality to all citizens and promote fraternity and brotherhood uh, uh, to maintain unity and integrity of the nation. Date of adoption of the constitution it stipulates in uh, November 26, 1949 at the date. Amendment by the Purchasing Amendment of 1976, the word socialist and secular were inserted. The preamble now reads sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic. Then the very, very union case in this case. Okay. It was held by the Supreme Court that the preamble is part of the constitution. However, it recognized that the preamble could be used as a guiding principle if it termed in any article the constitution ambiguous or has more than one meaning. In the Kasanunda Bharati case, so uh, 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 the state of Kerala, in this case, the Supreme Court overturned its earlier decision and held that the preamble is a part of the constitution and can be amended under Article 316 of the constitution. Again, in the Elias of India case, the Supreme Court held that the preamble is part of the Indian constitution. That took that till today, the preamble has been considered as a part of the constitution. Okay, then come to the question what do we understand by the term global minimum uh, tax? How does it affect India's economy? Okay, so global minimum tax applies the standard minimum tax rate to define corporate income based worldwide. The OECD developed a proposal featuring the corporate minimum tax of 15% on foreign profit. Large multinational company because right now in the global domain, so companies are operating globally. So the other multi, they are called as the multinational company, so MNCs. So they operate over a large number of countries and their business manufacturing and sell uh, domain spread national boundary. Okay, so a global minimum tax applies a standard minimum tax rate on defined corporate income based on worldwide. The OECD, Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development, developed a proposal featuring a corporate minimum tax of 15% foreign profit of large multinationals, which could give country new annual tax revenue of 150 billion. The framework of the global minimum tax aims to discourage nations from tax competition through lower tax rates that result in corporate profit shifting and tax waste erosion. That means the shifting their production and uh, market so from the uh, higher tax uh, country to the Lower tax country, this is what the corporates are right now resorting only to save the taxes okay, on them. Okay. To address the issue and gain global compliance, the OECD G20 inclusive framework has been introduced in June 2021. The G7 countries signed a deal agreeing to the framework on 1st July 2021. Around 130 countries, including India, agreed on a broad deal. The tax framework has the following two pillars. So, how this tax framework will be operational? It will operate on two different pillars. Pillar one, the largest and the most profitable MNC need to pay taxes, at least 20% of the profit of the companies above the profit margin of 10% would be reallocated and taxed in the countries where they operate, only in the country of operation. Global minimum corporate tax rate is at 15% in order 
to avoid any undercutting. The company that to be taxed uh, must have annual revenue at least 10 euro billion and 10% pre-tax profit margin. So those co company fulfilling this criteria will be coming under the uh, minimum uh, global minimum tax range. So the low tax jurisdiction, the MNC follow system of localizing, locating the headquarter whenever the tax is lowest so that the company ends up paying the tax at a much lower rate. Therefore, the smaller country uh, such as Ireland uh, were at advantage, but the bigger country lost out on tax revenue because those country have a lower tax rate. So many companies open their corporate office in those countries where the tax is less, thereby the large country are at loss. G7 countries have announced a minimum 50% tax rate on all MNC, irrespective of the whichever place they are, so that the advantage of the country shifting does not remove, does not remain a big issue. When the global minimum tax must be fixed to avoid country undercutting each other, to bring uniformity, the GM2 end a decade long race on the bottom in which country have competed, competed uh, to attract corporate giants with the ultra low tax rates and exemptions and it will bring uniformity in corporate taxation worldwide. Uh, Multi-layering uh, by MNC for profits, digital giants such as Apple, Alphabet and Facebook as well as many other major corporations typically rely on complex web sub subsidiaries to go over uh, profit out of major markets. Low tax countries such as Ireland or Caribbean nations such as the British Virgin Islands and the Bahamas or the Central American nations such as the Panamas. So they try to uh, have their headquarters there so they can shift uh, their uh, business and they will be ultimately resulting in paying very low taxes. India losses USD 1032 billion annually to global tax abuse equivalent to the annual salary of 4.2 million losses and 44.7% of the health expenditure. According to the study, debt shifting Okay, debt shifting according to the study uh, Debt shifting, regist registering intangible assets okay, and strategic transfer pricing at some way in which MNC practice tax evasion in the country, they operate and shift it to a tax savings. So, impact on economic inequality in the Indian country, the global minimum tax will bring equity, equal to those employees may be operating in India but not located in India and therefore not paying any taxes. Attract investment, India is likely to benefit from the global minimum 15% corporate tax rate, but at the effective domestic tax rate other than the special economic zone is above the threshold. All other probability, the concessional India tax regime would still work and India would continue to attract investment. India is an advantage. If India's tax rate too, it will be in an advantageous position because Indian tax rate have come at a position where India can afford to give concession to big companies and yet not fall down at the international tax rate. Challenges, although the 15% GMT will not affect the current investment in India, setting up more, more SEJ or giving incentive to company to invest in India will be a challenge if the global minimum tax is uh, implemented. This initiative of the G7 country is welcome move to address the different challenges that many countries are facing, putting it in place a global corporate tax and the minimum slab fixed by the G7 will uh, majorly impact the development of the economy. Then uh, coming to the MCQs.
ஆமா சரி இப்ப கருத்து சொன்னது பாரு